Here in France, the Union of Jewish Students and SOS Racism filing a suit against Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. They accused the social networking sites of failing to meet their obligations to delete content deemed racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic or that defends terrorism. A 2004 French law calls on Internet hosts to take down hate speech within a reasonable time. But those two groups claim they surveyed postings over the past two months that had been flagged and found that only 4% had been taken down on Twitter, 7% on YouTube, and 34% on Facebook. Facebook, which is in a bit of a tiff with uh, U.S. conservatives. For more, we're joined from Austin, Texas, by Vincent Harris, CEO of Harris Media. He's worked on the campaigns of Ted Cruz for the Senate and Rand Paul for president. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Great to be here. Uh, before we talk about that Wednesday sit down between uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the head of Facebook, and uh, uh, U.S. conservatives, uh, your reaction to the story we were talking uh, uh, about here, I know there's a different conception when it comes to free speech in the United States. Is it social media companies like t f Twitter, f uh, Facebook, YouTube, is it their responsibility to take down hate speech? Well, look. Facebook has some censorship guidelines up very publicly available for its users to be to be looking at as they're posting content. I can tell you as somebody who spent three months working for the prime minister of Israel that there have been some recent studies that we should all be pretty concerned about concerning Facebook. This recent study showed that of content online that was anti-Israel versus anti-Palestinian, that most of the content that was taken down was actually anti-Palestinian, and the anti-Israeli content was allowed to remain on Facebook. So a lot of this is is, is very subjective of on what type of content Facebook is actually removing and censoring. And that's really where this becomes a, a very hard question to be answering is, what type of content do you take down? Who might be offended by that content if it is taken down or if it's not? And here in the United States, a lot of the content that's been taken down and censored by Facebook has been deemed to be conservative content, which is very concerning to- And, and is, it, is it Facebook's job to be taking it down on its own, to be policing itself? Or uh, should there be stricter government guidelines in countries like France, Israel, and the United States? Well, look, I'm a big supporter of the First Amendment. I worked for a libertarian candidate for president named Rand Paul, who believes people should be able to say essentially whatever that they want, wherever that they want. So from my perspective in the United States, uh, I don't think almost anything should be censored. But certainly I understand in other countries where there's different constitutional guarantees or limits on, on speech or where, where speech like about Nazi propaganda or anti-Israel propaganda could get very, very testy. So certainly I think that Facebook needs to play by the guidelines and the laws in these countries. Which brings us to what you were describing. There's going to be on Wednesday, Mark Zuckerberg sitting down uh, with um, most notably uh, a prominent commentator on on Fox News, Glenn Beck, with uh, other representatives of conservative media. This after a report came out a short while ago that uh, the algorithm uh, by which uh, stories move up or down uh, at Facebook was skewed against conservatives. First of all, do you think it's true? So I think it's too early for us to actually tell if it's true or if it's not true. Facebook hasn't actually said much, which is a little concerning to me. Um, this, this post that came out on the website, Gizmodo, alleged from a former staffer at Facebook that the trending topics news section on Facebook was being selected only to show more liberal publications and that the headlines on those news stories, which are written by actual people, were more liberal leaning. This, this obviously as a conservative 
concerns me. And I can see how Facebook might explain away this one, but when you look at a pattern from Facebook, for example, their CEO Mark Zuckerberg started a pro immigration pack here in the United States, which a bunch of Donald Trump supporters don't appreciate. A secondary thing are issues of censorship around things like you just mentioned, um, around posts that are that are pro-Palestinian versus pro-Israeli. And then you get to this topic of conservative news and, and what type of information is being shown. You know, Facebook is a primary source of news and political information for a lot of people around the, the world. So whatever shows up in that trending topics box is going to have a huge impact on voters' perceptions of their governments, on voters' perceptions of individual candidates. So Facebook needs to be very transparent with us about how news is getting in that box. And as a conservative, I'm spending a lot of my clients' money advertising on Facebook. And All right, so for Vincent, it, Vincent, let me just ask you about this, because you said to us a few minutes ago, you're very reluctant when it comes to getting governmental authorities to to police the internet. This issue of algorithms is important, especially yeah. in an election campaign year. But could the end result then be that uh, there'll be a, quote, liberal Facebook and a, quote, conservative Facebook, and that um, there'll be no common ground anymore, and that more and more left and right won't be speaking to each other? Well, look, that's a wonderful question. And Facebook, as a private business, can do whatever that it wants. All I'm saying is I think that Facebook needs to be transparent about if they want to be like MSNBC, they should just tell us all. And there's a political science term called incidental exposure, which is what you're talking about, that many political scientists and communication scholars have studied about Facebook. Because as everything gets so polarized, as conservatives watch Fox News and conservative publications and liberals watch MSNBC and liberals, publications, Facebook has historically been one place where, where there's been no filter, where people can actually share any type of content that they want and, and be actually incidentally exposed, accidentally read content that their liberal or conservative friends have posted. And that's where this is such a big deal and, and all of us across the world should be so concerned. How is news that we're seeing on Facebook actually getting to us? Does Facebook have an agenda? Do people who work for Facebook have an agenda? And if they do, again, I think they should just be disclosing that to us and letting us know that this actually isn't an unfiltered medium. This is a medium that has real people in some country somewhere deciding what news and information that we're reading every day. All right. And if, we're going to yeah. have to leave it there, Vincent Harris, unfortunately, because we, we have to go to the break. But I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, from Austin, Texas.